just don't understand it all, Dad. I understand I let you have the car for a couple hours. You've been gone half the night. Half the night? It isn't even eight yet. That's exactly five hours. What? There's no big... You weren't going anywhere with a car. That counts. What counts is that you... Big privilege. Give me a break, Dad. Don't you understand? I'm not a little kid anymore. Thing like a little kid. A four-year-old knows the difference between day and night. And where were you anyway? It's none of your business. What did you say? It's personal. It's my own personal business. Oh, your personal business. A stupid, giggly 17-year-old girl hasn't got a brain in her head. Look, Sally's practically 18, and she's hard. I've been had right out of your driving privilege. You can give me those keys now. No. I refuse. You can't stop me from driving. Oh, I can't. I... Another thing coming. If Sally was any kind of a girl, she wouldn't let you get yourself into this kind of a jam. She didn't get me into anything. I did it all by myself. Oh. And if you don't like it, you can just... I can what? What? Oh, man, you... You just consider yourself grounded, son. For two weeks. Swell. Why don't you make it a month? All right, wise guy, I will. 30 days. You're grounded for 30 days. Maybe that'll give you a little time to reflect on the wisdom of the fourth commandment. Yeah, I can sure honor somebody like you. Very understanding. <laughs> Sally was sure right. Sally's right about what? Christians. Christian love. It's all just a giant fake. Insight. An exploration in depth of the spiritual conflicts of the 20th century. Insight. How do you do? My name is Father Kaiser. The Henderson household is not unique. Tension, even conflict, are a frequent part of growing up. They are as old as human nature itself. The child is dependent upon his parents not only for food and clothing, but for guidance and discipline. Most of the important decisions affecting his life are made by his parents. This is as it should be, for a child is not yet capable of running his own life or fully exercising his own freedom. But there comes a time when a boy stands on the verge of manhood. Suddenly his parents find him demanding freedom. No longer is he willing to have life governed from outside. No longer is he content to obey all his parents' commands. He wants to chart the course of his own life and exercise his freedom without any kind of external control. This too is as it should be. For a man is a man. He's a complete human being. Only when he's free. Only when he makes his own decisions chooses his own goals and directs the course of his own life. All parental training, all education must have this as its goal. It must prepare the individual for freedom. It must inculcate the habits and supply the motives for the wise and fulfilling use of freedom. The transition from the dependence of a child to the independence and freedom of the adult is often a stormy one. It's stormy for the parents because they sometimes fail to see the changes taking place in their son. They expect a child's obedience from someone who's almost a man. When they don't get it, they become discouraged and upset. It's stormy for the boy, because so often he does not yet know how to use his freedom. He rejects external control, yet he knows little about self-control. Sometimes this makes him bitter and resentful. He has to learn by painful experience that freedom involves responsibility. It must be guided by reason. It must be used in accordance with one's dignity as a human person. It must always respect the rights of others. It must be exercised in obedience to the laws of God. And that, as Danny Henderson finds out, is no laughing matter. Hello? Sally? Oh, Danny, what happened? Was it all right? Guess what? I, I'm shut down. Grounded? Oh, Danny, no! Yeah, for 30 days. A whole month? Oh, no! Sally? I, Sally? Danny Henderson, if you think I'm going to go around with somebody who gets himself grounded for a whole month right at the end of school... Wait a second, it was because I was out with you that... Ooh, don't you try to blame me because your parents still treat you like a 14-year-old. It's not like we stayed out all night or something. I didn't try to you. I wouldn't even tell my old man that we were out together. Why not? Aren't I good enough to be out with this little boy? Like maybe you're ashamed of me or something. Well, I wouldn't want to contaminate you. Danny? 
Danny. Well, I did give up an awful lot to go out with you in the first place. I mean, after all, a senior who doesn't even have his own car. Well, can I help with that? My parents are out of it. Well, you don't have to drag me down, too. You were the one that begged me to go steady. I could have anybody I want. What am I supposed to do while you're being grounded like a junior high schooler? Well, we won't have to miss anything. I mean, when my old man grounds me, it's from using his car, but we can still... Oh, here he comes. I, I gotta hang up. I'll talk to you tomorrow in school. Danny? Danny? Oh. A whole month? Why, that's clear till after the prom. <laughs> Charles, I think you're being completely unreasonable. If you want to ground him for a week or two, all right, but for the rest of the school year... I should have hit him in the mouth for every hour he was late. Well, how would you like it if I hit you in the mouth for every hour you were late from the golf course? Oh, that's not the same thing, and you know it. I know. Different rules for adults. You doggone betcha. That's not why I grounded him anyway. I didn't like his impudent attitude about the whole thing. I was highly insulted because I happened to object to his driving my car all around town like it was a free taxi or something. Therefore, according to him, I have no Christian love in me. I see. It's your pride. That's right. Well, do you think that's any way for an 18-year-old kid to talk to his father? No more than I think it's any way for a 40-year-old father to act towards his son. Now, why do I always have to be the one that's at fault oh, anyway? come on, dear. Look, he deliberately disobeyed me. He admits that, but he won't admit that he's done anything wrong. Now, he's got to learn now that if he breaks the rules, he has to take the consequences, too. If he doesn't learn that, he, how's he ever going to face up to any responsibilities later on? But, dear, he's just a boy. I think we're being too hard on him. Why can't we temper justice with love? Well, I'm sorry. I think I've bent over backwards as far as I can go. But you're only going to make him more rebellious. Well, how more rebellious can he get right now? He's, he's impudent, he's defiant, blasphemous. Blasphemous? Oh, Charles, our little... Our little sanctimonious ex-altar boy is blasphemous. To quote him loosely, he says, Christians are all a bunch of big phonies putting on a giant act. How do you like that? He said that? With emphasis. You two really had an argument, didn't you? We sure did. I just don't want to go to the prom with someone who can't drive. But, Sally, what... After all, I've already been chosen one of the prom princesses. I might even be queen. It'll be a snap. Well, how would it look if the prom queen showed with a boy who wasn't even allowed to drive? Don't worry. I'll be allowed to drive. I mean, my dad didn't say anything about mom's car, and I know I can count her. That beat up old Tank? Really? Some status symbol for a queen rather walk. Which reminds me, what about sports night Friday night? We did have a date, didn't we? Well, of course, no sweat. I mean, we can always double with Jim. But that'll be tough. I just love sharing a ride with the all-time nothing. The guy's okay, for a tool. And I can get him to take out Barbara. It'll be great, one tool out with another, just like a chauffeur and maid. I'm not in the habit of going out with the maid. Yeah, but just to sports night. And I promise, Sally, we'll go to the prom in real class. Sure. Danny, don't eat so fast. I got a rush, Mom. I'll be late for class. Bye, Mom. Danny, your father's sitting right here. Danny! Yeah. Charles, I can't stand this any longer. What? What? You know perfectly well what? You two haven't spoken to each other for a whole week. Now, I just can't live like this. I told you I'm ready to forget the whole thing and forgive the minute that he's willing to admit that he's wrong. Then make the first move. What are parents for? I'll trot out the fatted calf when the prodigal returns and not before. He has to return first. Oh, really, Charles? It's really bad. Well, that Barbara, there's a dancer. She's something else. How about nut nose? They're a match set. Really cool. I don't feature having to ride home with them every Friday night for another month. No. We gotta have wheels. Maybe I ought to get a new boyfriend. Oh, come on, Sally. Give me a break. I mean, after all, it was on account of you that I got grounded in the first place. Not the way you told it. I'd say you were shut down for telling your old man off. I didn't tell him off. 
exactly. I was just trying to stick up for you. Now, what's wrong with that? You're my girl, aren't you? You're such a toad. Why'd I ever have to fall for you? Because I'm boss. Boss toad. I'm a toad, all right. My old man thinks I'm J.D. number one. Imagine Danny Henderson, lover of God, country, and mother, in juvie. <laughs> don't laugh. You don't know my dad. He'd send me down to the hall himself if he caught me doing anything. Like what? Uh, you know, illegal, immoral, or fattening. Danny, don't you have any life of your own? Well, sure. I, I go with you, don't I? Well, don't bother. No, I didn't mean it like that, Well, Sally. why don't you just paint a giant scarlet letter on me or Please, something? Please, I only meant that my parents try to run my life, all of it. Now, if they had their way, I'd be going with some Sunday schooler they picked. Small string, like you're really tied. No, I'm not, not since I've known you. I'm not going to let them, their wheels, their money, or anything come between you and me. Okay, prove it. Well, sure. How? Get your dad's car for the prom. <sighs> my dad's car? You know he'd never go back on grounding me. Toad. Big, fat, giant please, toad. Please, Sally, Big, please. Big, fat, giant Please, look, toad. I'll get a better car. Toad. I I'll get a Stingray toad. or an XKE, toad. I promise. Toad. Please. Toad. Toad. Okay, okay, you win. I'll get my dad's car. I don't know how, but I'll get it. Toad. <laughs> is growing up. He is starting to learn that the exercise of freedom always involves the assumption of responsibility. Whenever Danny acts freely, he brings into existence something which is peculiarly his own. It's his own because he freely creates it. If that something is good, he can expect to enjoy its fruits. If that something is evil, he can expect to suffer the consequences. This is the law of life. No one can divorce himself from his own free acts. No one can escape the consequences of what he freely does. Responsibility always follows freedom. It is the inevitable result of freedom. Danny freely and deliberately chose to abuse the driving privilege given him by his father. As a result, he was forced to face the consequences of that decision. He lost that privilege for a month. His father could have closed his eyes to the abuse of the privilege. He could have ignored Danny's early attitude. But that would have been a mistake. It would have done Danny a serious disservice it would have exempted him from the responsibility he must learn to assume for all his actions. As a child begins to mature, he should be given a measure of freedom. If he uses that freedom well, he should be given more freedom. The more perfectly he uses the limited freedom that is given him, the more unlimited that freedom can become. But even in the mature individual, freedom is never safe. It can be compromised, it can be limited, it can even be destroyed. By what? by its misuse, by allowing itself to be tyrannized by some created pleasure. That's what we usually call sin. Sin is that which limits freedom. It is that which impedes the use of freedom. It is that which robs freedom of its power to love. Danny now finds his freedom threatened not by his parents, but by Sally. He has great affection for her. But she, motivated by an immature selfishness, makes irresponsible behavior the price of her continued companionship. Danny does not want to pay this price, but he finally consents. He promises to give her something he has no right to. By doing so, he seriously compromises his own freedom. Hi. Hi. Well, you may hail the conquering hero. Well, if you're the winner, the loser must be a wreck. It's 91 in the shade out there. I probably lost 10 pounds, but it was worth it. I shot an 82 out of you. 82. Wow, dee dow. Arnold Palmer, move over. <sighs> I'm thirsty. Oh, I got you cold drink. Hey, Danny. Danny, listen. Um, why do you say we have a truce, son? I mean, if not from obedience and for love for your mother. Now, she can't take the two of us giving each other the silent treatment anymore. Okay. Arm truce, sir. Okay, son. Look, how about doing your old man a favor? Put those clubs away. I'm bushed. What am I, a servant? Don't argue. Just do as you're told. Go on. Don't argue. Do as you're told. Someday us slaves are going to make the freedom sing. Slaves. You hear that? Sometimes he makes me so mad I could 
Well, I'm glad to see you two are back to normal. Thanks, dear. Now, do you still think I'm being too hard on him? Well, just hmm? try to meet him halfway. He wants to, really. Bad. I just did try to meet him halfway, didn't I? Yes, yes, you've started. But these past few weeks have been awfully rough on him. As a matter of fact, this whole year's been rough on him. Well, a couple more weeks, you'll be off probation when you forget the whole thing. Yes, but the prom is this week, Charles. Come on, give a little, be generous. Not on your life. Just wreck everything I've done with him. I give in to him now, and, and, and he's going to lose every bit of respect he's ever had for my authority, what little he has left. He'll think he can sweet talk his way into and out of everything and anything for the rest of his life. Oh, sir, this is the time we got to hold the line. But he's really trying hard. You have no idea how he's helped me around the house. Ah. And his grades are improving, too. He needs your car in the worst way, Charles. Sure he does. Well, you know, his girl is the prom queen. Yes, I know. Oh, come on, Charles. Christian love. Mm. I'm doing a little thinking about that, too, lately. And I have arrived at the conclusion that there are times well, the only way you can show Christian love is to be firm and unrelenting. But not unforgiving. He hasn't asked to be forgiven, and he won't until he admits he's done something wrong and takes a punishment for it. Look, I give in to him now, and he's going to be the one that'll suffer in the long run. That was a pretty hard decision to come by, too. It's cherry pie. They're out of them. It's okay. I wouldn't know the difference. Not today, anyway. Why not? Well, you haven't forgotten, have you, Danny? Tonight? How could I forget? Every guy in the class will be wishing you were me tonight. Well, I don't mean the prom or even being queen. I mean your promise. Oh, no, of course not. Good, then it's all settled. I knew you would. You'll never know how much I've been counting on you to come through. I can't count on you. I haven't got any security at all. Well, sure you do. You've got your folks. Well, they care. Except for my bills, they wouldn't even miss me. I'm sure they would. Everybody's folks care. It just seems like they don't, because they don't understand sometimes. My poor dumb toad. You want to know where they'll be while their darling daughter is dressing for the biggest night of her life? On their way to Vegas so they can catch the early show. They don't even know what color dress I'm wearing. They don't? Mother sent me to Bullock's with the charger plate and said to get what I wanted. Don't forget to match the accessories, Sally, darling. That's what really makes a woman. They sure care, all right. Gosh, I'm sorry, Sally. That's why you can't let me down tonight, Danny. You're all I've got. Toad. <laughs> How's my favorite girl? Hi, darling. You know something? You're the youngest looking mother I know. Oh, come on. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? Sally, you look lovely in that. You better put it in the refrigerator. Oh, hey, no, Mom. You're not supposed to. It's one of those new kind of orchids. The man at the store said, don't put it in the refrigerator. Do not place this flower in refrigerator. Well, I never heard of such a thing. Yeah, it's got something to do with the way they grow them, I think. Mutation. Oh, well, you better get it out of this hot kitchen. It's gonna just, you know, put it in your room, dear, so you won't forget it. No sweat, it'll be okay. It's gonna fall over, wither, and die. It's my flower, my worry, right? I believe I can follow one simple direction. Well, just follow my directions and put it in your room. That is, if you expect to borrow my car tonight. The old boat? I'm sorry, Mother, but I just don't quite feature taking out the queen of the prom and a 15-year-old Woody. Oh. Well, just how do you plan to get there? Well, Dad's car, of course. How did you talk him into it? Well, I... I haven't. I was kind of hoping you'd do it for me. Oh, no, you don't. This is a problem between you and your father. Just count me out. Come on, Mom, you got to help me out. Sally's put me on a giant spot. It, it's either Dad's car or no problem. Oh, that's ridiculous. Because I don't blame her for not wanting to put a nice new dress in that dirty old station wagon. You can take a taxi. Oh, Mom, she'll never do it. It's got to be Dad's car. But a taxi is perfectly proper. She's used to servants. It'll be like a chauffeured limousine. No, that's just why she won't do it. She's made it a point of honor to prove that I like her. You like? Well, you're taking her to the prom. What other proof does she need? No, you don't understand, Mom. 
It's psychological. Her parents don't care enough about her to find out what kind of a dress she's wearing tonight. She needs to know that somebody cares enough about her to, to do something for her. Something unnecessary, even, just because she wants it. It's like a symbol. Hmm. Come in, son. Come on, sit down. Now. You really care for Sally, don't you, son? Yeah. You care enough to help her? I mean, really help her? By showing her where she's wrong? Why does she have to be wrong? Deep down inside, you know she is, don't you? Well, I know... And you know she needs I'm... help. Not a status symbol, she needs help. Danny, love isn't measured by material things. And evidently that's the only kind of love Sally's ever known. And she's found it's not enough. Yeah. I know. But she's depending on me, though, Mom, and I can't let her down. If you cater to this whim of hers, you'll really be letting her down. Just as your father would have been letting you down if he'd given in after he grounded you. Honey, real love is measured by how much you give of yourself. Now, parents must give their children security. Not just food and clothes and a car, but security through authority and discipline, even if it's hard. Now, you may not believe this, but it's harder for the parent to give the child a spanking than it is for the child to receive it. Yeah, sure, Mom. You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin. All right, Mr. Heifetz, I'll prove it. You know where your father is right now? He's over at your grandmother's, trying to talk her into offering you the Cadillac for the prom tonight. Dad is? Mm -hmm. Since he can't give in, he's had to find a way of helping you without losing authority. Uh, I didn't have much luck, though. Cadillac's in the garage. She won't get it back till tomorrow. I've been eavesdropping, Danny. I'll tell you what I'll do. How about swapping me an extra week for tonight? Thanks, Dad. But I think I'll wait until I earn them. Well, you just did, son. Now, the reason I was grounded in the first place was because Sally was being a big pig. And if it's all the same to you, I guess we'll take Mom's old boat. The old boat's keys are on the dresser, honey. Well, I, I guess I'd better hurry if I'm going to get it cleaned up in time. I can get Sally one on the way. <sighs> well, we say we go out to dinner tonight. Have a chance to wear that thing. After I've worked all afternoon, not on your life. You can take me tomorrow night. And every night, as long as this orchid lasts. Okay. Provided you wear it and don't stick it in the refrigerator. I remember one you kept in there for two weeks. Anything you say, child. Am I beautiful, Daddy? Boss. Get my flower on. I didn't get one, Sally. You didn't get one? No, I'm going to get it on the way. I'm sorry, Danny. I thought you didn't care. I should have known you wouldn't let me down. I've got something to show you. And just one thing, I, I do care more than anything. You did let me down. You did, you did. You ugly old toad. My father offered me his car, and I turned him down. Small lie. No. I just figured it was time that you proved something to me for a change. Now, if you care for me or anybody except yourself, here's your chance to prove it. Now, I'm going to the prime, and I'm going in that old boat. Are you coming with me? Boston. Danny Henderson has taken a giant step forward in the painful process of growing up. He has begun to realize what freedom is for. 
and what it entails. At the beginning of today's story, Danny thought that freedom was the arbitrary power to do whatever he felt like doing. If he wanted to suit his own fancy, exalt his own ego, and violate the rights of other people, then that was his own business, he thought. No one, not even his own father, had the right to stop him. Now he has begun to realize that this kind of freedom is not freedom at all. It's license. It does not ennoble, it degrades. True freedom is the power to use one's own nature in accordance with its dignity in order to attain its purpose, which is union with God. Danny's conflict with his father has been an important part of his education. From it, he has learned some very important things. Real freedom begins in the mind. It demands thought. It presupposes knowledge. What kind of knowledge does Danny need to be truly free? I think he needs knowledge of himself, what he is, and more important still, who he is. He needs knowledge of God, and of the plan God has revealed for the fulfillment of a human life. He needs knowledge of other people, what he has a right to expect of them, and what they have a right to expect of him. Danny will be fully mature, truly free, only when he has made up his mind what he's going to live for, only when he starts directing all his actions toward that goal. To do this, Danny must obey certain laws. What kind of laws? Well, the law of God revealed by him for the government of a human life. The laws Danny will find written into his own nature. Laws which say that certain actions are compatible with his dignity as a human person, and that other actions are not. The laws of civilized society, including those laid down by his parents. These laws are not a restriction on Danny's freedom. They are the guidelines for the fulfilling use of that freedom. Only now is Danny beginning to realize this. In deciding to stand on his own two feet and take his mother's car to the prom, Danny has shown that he grasps what freedom entails. Independence, internal strength, responsibility. He has demonstrated real maturity. To be mature means to think one's own thoughts, to plan one's own life, to choose one's own goal. A mature person controls his own life because he has learned to control himself. He accepts responsibility for all he does. He is one who knows what freedom is for. God made us free to enable us to love. Love is the fulfillment of freedom. It is the mark of the mature person. Inside is a production of the Paulus Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.